Hello, this is Ayan from Toolchef. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new contact steering module. You can use this module to uh, drive your agent and make avoid uh, obstacle and other agents. Uh, I have uh, prepared a simple uh, level here uh, with some agents that is reaching uh, um, some target using the navigation uh, module. And there is also an obstacle here that is not affecting the navigation mesh. So right now, if I press play, you will see the agent just goes through, and also they they are so overlapping each other. So let's start adding the new context steering uh, component. So the, what the context steering does is to uh, generate some rays around the the agents. Uh, some of these rays basically detect obstacle uh, and the distance uh, between the agent uh, and the obstacle in all those uh, direction uh, and also there are some rays basically that determine the interest the, the interest direction the agent should should follow and then the cost contact steering takes the, those all, all those rays and try to basically maximize the interest direction while minimize the, the, the obstacle direction. In this way, you make the agent basically uh, avoid obstacle or dynamic obstacle in, uh, in your scene. So um, the context steering basically can use uh, different uh, behaviors. So we have uh, uh, the, the sample generator that generates the rays that you can see here. Uh, you will see the the green the green rays are the interest direction. It means that, for example, this agent has the highest interest to go in this direction, while can go in this direction, but it's not the higher interest direction. Uh, here you can control the number of sample. For example, you can use eight sample uh, or thirty two. Uh, usually, I, I saw that the best value are between 8 or 16. Uh, for this example, let me be 16. And then we have the max distance. The max distance is used to detect uh, obstacle around agents. Uh, so here you can decrease or increase. This way you can control the, um, the search radius of the agent. Of, of each agent. Uh, then you start to the each behaviors. Uh, so if you, you can add multiple behaviors here, um, those behaviors basically modify the the rays magnitude and direction. Uh, for example, we have the direction uh, behavior. This one basically is the one that compute the the interest direction. Uh, here basically uh, the direction is taking basically the input direction, in case the direction from the navigation, and then it's doing a dot product between all the, the rays. And you can control basically the, the max angle. For example, if you want, just uh, uh, evaluate the interest on the on 90 degrees. Uh, you can just uh, change this value here. This means basically the agent can go in on forward and side direction, but can go backward. So if I put 180, then there is also an interest direction here. It's really small, but it means the agent can also go on the, on the backward direction if, if, if there are too many obstacles in front of the agent. Uh, let's have a look at the other uh, module. Uh, so we have the obstacle avoidance. The obstacle avoidance uh, let basically agents Avoid the obstacle that are registered to the atom sub obstacle subsystem. We'll show you in a bit how to do that. And then we have the walls avoidance that make the agent uh, uh, avoid the walls of the navigation mesh. Uh, let's have a look uh, to the simulation. So I have some agent there, and then start basically to, to avoid the walls. There is something, something to tweak, for example, that agents that just go basically around there. Uh, but let's have a look. Uh, so to fix that, uh, we need to go on the navigation behavior. So at the moment, the navigation behavior has a max turn angle. 
when you use the context steering and you have other um, other direction component here don't let the direction component limit the, the turn angle but let the context steering limit uh, the turn the turn angle velocity of the agent so i can i don't know let's put 2000 here and then on the context steering you can control the angular velocity here so i can put on 150 and let's play the simulation I have a better result than compared to before. So let's have a look to the other parameter that we can use to tweak the simulation. Uh, okay, let's go to context steering. Uh, so we have the max linear acceleration. Uh, this is the max linear acceleration of the uh, locomotion, so of the blend space um, weight. Uh, let's put I don't know, 200. This one is the uh, 200 unit per second and then we have the danger threshold so the danger threshold means that basically if there is a array that hit an obstacle and this obstacle basically hits the 0 0.8 uh, per the 80 percent of the of the rays then this direction uh, is excluded so the agent doesn't consider this direction. Uh, we can increase this one uh, or decrease this one. You need to um, play a bit in your simulation to find the, the right value. You could see the, the red rays are the obstacle rays. Uh, in fact, here the, they detect basically the, the navigation wars here. Is detecting and you can also see the the color lines on the ground is the, the words that each agent has detected uh, let's have a look to the other component we can use and here you can add a new uh, context theory component and we can use for example the line trace the line trace basically let uh, let's fire the rays and try to hit with the uh, with the environment using the line trace function. You can, for example, make it collide with the with the pawn, for example. So if I put here, you see the agent. I try to to avoid the pawn. And then we, uh, we can uh, use, for example, a smooth filter. The smooth filter um, basically try to smooth the the ray heat result uh, between multiple rays using uh, a Gauss filter. Uh, so if you see the agent that uh, some some jitter on the agents you can try with the, the smooth filter to smooth a bit the result uh, yeah, here there is the line trace that is preventing for the agent to go there because uh, we need to offset the, the rays because the moment that is Try to fire the rays from the root here. So let's offset, uh, I don't know, 60, something like that. And now you see they also start to avoid the obstacle uh, because uh, they're using the, the line trace. Okay, let me go to the contact steering and remove the, the line trace. Uh, let's keep this one. Uh, ah, yeah, for the smooth filter, you can choose if you want to smooth the interest uh, rays. So the, the green rays, basically, or the danger rays. They are the, the, the rays that hit the obstacles. Uh, so let's have a look to the obstacle avoidance now. 
Uh, so as I told you before, this one uh, basically try to do a recast um, on the obstacle that are registered to the Atom Topsicle uh, subsystem. So if you want to register an obstacle to Atoms, uh, here we need, for example, this one, we need uh, a cube collision. No, sorry, a box collision. And let's increase this one. And then under the collision components, we can add an atoms obstacle. In this way, we now we are registering this uh, collision shape to the atoms subsystem, and now basically the obstacle avoidance is able to detect. Uh, here you can choose the uh, the predictive time used to find a collision. So if I go here, you see now detect the, the collision with the with the box star. The this one can be animated. And uh, this atoms obstacle, sorry, not this one. Let me remove this one. This atoms obstacle uh, can be attached under a uh, box, sphere, capsule, collision shape, can be attached to a spline component. Uh, for example, if I create a quickly a spline here. And let me create quickly a spline. Here and here. And now something like this and let the spline at the atom obstacle. Now you see, oops, the obstacle already detect uh, the spline. Uh, here you can choose the number of subsample of the spline, the height, and so on. Uh, actually, let me move this one, and then move the spline. Oops, this one. Basically, you see the red lines means that we have detected the, the spline component. Uh, okay, uh, another thing with the atoms obstacle, you can attach to another region group, or to the group itself, to make the agent avoid each other. Because if I press play here, you will see the agent basically they overlap each other. Uh, if I want, if I want make the agent not overlap each other to avoid also the agents, I can add an atoms obstacle to the agent group, and now each agent can see other agents. Obviously, you can attach this one to other. If you have other agent group, you can just need to attach the atoms obstacle, and all the agents are basically in the same collision pool and they can see each other. And now you see they are not overlap anymore. Last thing about the Atoms uh, obstacle component, uh, this component is able to generate a radial field if it's not connected under any collision shape, spline, or the agent group component. So, for example, if I create an empty actor at an um, atom obstacle, then the and I turn on the repulsion force, then this start to generate a radial field. So, if I increase the max distance, a little too much, and here start to see the the influence of this radial field. I can put some attenuation. Yeah, explanation there. 
and put some force here. I, if, you, if you have a socket, you can connect this one to a socket. And then you see, oh, let, me, um, let me disable the, the culling and let's simulate. You see basically they are pushed away by the radial field as soon the agent entering the radial field area. Uh, let's have a look uh, one second to the two parameter and the uh, obstacle avoidance. Uh, so we have two uh, predictive time. Uh, this one is used by the time on collision uh, algorithm used to detect uh, collision between agents or obstacle or dynamic obstacle and then we have the RVO so basically uh, this one should be always lower than this value RVO basically if you have if you put a value higher than zero start to use RVO to solve the, the avoidance um, I, I suggest to if you need RVO to put really low numbers like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but yes, only when you really need LVO. Otherwise, leave zero and use the normal predictive time because LVO is quite expensive. So if you have a lot of agents, can hit quite quite bad your performance. Um, okay, let's have a look to the uh, yeah to the other three parameter here to the left. Uh, so we have the uh, angle threshold. The angle threshold basically just uh, limits of the valid uh, rays and direction the agent can follow. So now basically can follow all the 180 rays. If I decrease, for example, to 60, I see all the obstacle red lines at the maximum magnitude. This means that those those rays are basically highest danger direction, so the agent can't choose any of these rays and direction, so it will basically just can basically just turn on one of those uh, uh, those direction here, and um, and you can control this with the metadata set so use this uh, this uh, static value here. And last parameter is the align init that you can choose to align the agent, uh, the uh, agent creation or, or not. If you leave off, basically just take the, the input direction because the direction of the navigation behavior. Uh, one important thing is at the moment the context setting is uh, working best with the um, with a blend space state. So when you basically are drilling the velocity of the agent using the target linear velocity metadata, because it's used basically this uh, value as a, uh, input velocity to compute all the um, all the collision collision points and rays. Uh, so if you if you still are using one of the normal state, so not a, a blend space state. Uh, then you could still see some uh, some compenetration uh, because basically uh, the context series is not able to slow down the, the animation, while with the blend space is basically is controlling and animating the target linear velocity, so it's controlling the the weight value of the blend space. Uh, last thing. Uh, to talk about is the behavior areas, uh, context steering and behavior, but I'll cover this one in another uh, tutorial since it's using a separate behavior area subsystem that you can extend. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.